For this season, we have New Yoshan. New Yoshan, introduce yourself. Hi, uh, I am New Yoshan. Wait a minute. Who are you? I buy a couple of things. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> um, I mean, energy drinks. Ener energy drinks. Right. Children. The word for hello to a total stranger is. Hold up. I gotta prepare. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> Zrestoiche. What? Paket. I'm sorry, what? Paket. What do you call me? No, paket, paket, paket. And he show, she showed me a shopping bag. Right. So, oh, bag, bag. Yes, yes, I would love a bag. Thank you. Uh, you have the power. You have the instrument of power. Was that too loud, Takshi? Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> we have a sound for you guys. <laughs> All right. But that must have been very loud. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to season two of That's So Bro. For this season, we have New Yoshan. New Yoshan, introduce yourself. Hi, uh, I am New Yoshan. I'm still the old Yoshan, but uh, obviously, Sima, I had to go through a very rigorous fitness routine, regrew my hair, and uh, slightly change the accent. No, I'm not. I'm not. Clearly, I'm not Yoshan. Right. <laughs> uh, but yes, I am Radhika or Rads or Rad. Uh, and yes, I shall be your host alongside Amanda over here. I'm so inclined to go, welcome and bienvenue, welcome. Meanwhile, since Yoshan is not here, uh, but he's with us in spirit, he sent us a message all the way from uh, the, the high middle, seas. The middle of some ocean. In the middle of some ocean. I think he's in somewhere around Africa. Some, yeah. Mediterranean Sea? I don't know. But uh, he sent out his message because we told him we are talking about the power of words. And this is what he had to say. It's only words And words are all I have To take your heart away Well, okay. <laughs> safe to say that he didn't take anyone's heart away with that one. Thanks, Yoshan. <laughs> Thank you, Yoshan. <laughs> we'll be sure to let him know. <laughs> the, the topic we want to talk about today was um, essentially speech and the power of speech, right? And the reason why we want to do this is twofold. One is because we decide now, even, even what we're doing right now, right? It is yes. essentially speech. Sure, you get a video, but essentially what is being conveyed is, is purely speech, right? And the second thing is, since Rads is um, a professional speaker, I have an event that's coming on Monday, so I need advice. <laughs> so, Rad. <laughs> I mean, honestly, man, I think you're doing okay. And uh, thank you for the professional speaker part. It's... I got you. I got you. I, I had to study you somehow. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> no worries. Um, so, we know, we know just how powerful speech is. My right? God, yes. We know people who have given powerful speeches in the past and how that has literally moved mountains of people. How it has changed, like, the course of history. Yes. Uh, and it's funny because words, uh, I mean, it's only words, right? It, it's, a literal, it's only words. It's, it's a literal vibration from here. Yeah, yeah the little, the, the voice box. Voice and box, then yeah. wind coming through it with this little, two little... Uh, Flapulas. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Is that, wow. Well, well, that's that, not the word. That's, that's not the word? word? Okay. <laughs> Is that like a phalange thing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. The flapulas. The, flap, the flapulas. Yeah. Uh, technical term. Uh, so they just vibrate against your throat, like on, in your throat, and suddenly you have sound. Right. And people use it to make sounds with their mouth and sing and, and you know, beatbox and other stuff. And also say words. And, and also say and, words. And, and <laughs> coming back to the point again, <laughs> was just how, with something so minuscule, how you can actually change a person's reality. Right? That is so true because... Uh, now, even while we are talking, whatever you're saying, whether I like it or not, is influencing me in a certain way. Right. Whether it's positive, negative, neutral, whatever it is. So words have such a huge impact of how we communicate and how pe other people see us also. Right. I mean, you know, there's a whole, you know, 90% of what we're saying in body language. Right. But honestly, it's the words that can have the biggest impact. Right. I mean, if, if now you're hosting one the day after? Monday. Monday. I got a gig on Tuesday. Yeah, so I, I guess I guess we. Uh, I guess that that's so bro. Yeah, yeah that is so bro, that, yeah. and we can take our own advice here. 
so I mean, I mean, we, I mean, you mentioned how words can change, or how words can move mountains, right. change the course of history, and it can. I mean, historically speaking, uh, words are ways of sort of galvanizing the masses right. for a cause. Uh, I mean, think of the military. Right. Uh, words are used to give orders so that people can go and kill other people. <laughs> right. Yeah. In wars, right? Or, you know, it can be used for good also. I mean, that sort of, that is the power we're dealing with here. Um, and it's interesting because you go, if you go back, if you look back as far in history as you may even know, like even modern times, uh, down to the 1900s, 1800s, all that, you'll find places where you have uh, speeches that have changed history or if for the good or worse. Right. Uh, the I good mean, being... I mean, good, the good being the speeches like uh, the JFK speech right. uh, that inspired, well, sort of got the Americans to go, <laughs> we got to hustle up, folks. we got to get to the moon before the Russians do. Right. Uh, then you have Mahatma Gandhi's speeches, uh, the speech, the very famous speech. Right, the he Quit United, India. Yeah, Quit India. Right. The one he basically got the entire, that massive subcontinent right. of people united. Right. Uh, there is, there is, I don't uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure of the details, but I heard this somewhere. And then I read, I saw this somewhere. J.R. Jayawardena right. <clears throat> made a speech in Japan. Okay. That was so impactful that, that I think that was the speech that convinced that country to make amends with their former sort of enemies, uh, especially with the Pearl Harbor incidents and all that. Right. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, we have our own people who've done it. And there are speeches, great speeches that have been, uh, made here on local soil right. by our you know, former uh, people uh, who've led the country, uh, government employees. There are great speeches. Right. Even though, I mean, recently we hear very, uh, what do you call it, very uh, convoluted types of speeches. But yes. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Yes. Yes. Um, but yeah. And then you have the bad side of it. Right. Because you have probably the biggest bad of history that we know so far. Adolf Hitler, the vegetarian painter who turned into mass murdering gay. Sycophant. Sycophant, yes. Right. Uh, his thing was using words to literally, hip, like, not hypnotize, but like, uh, uh, mind control the, the masses in right. thinking that he's right. No, no, it, it, is a form of, it is a form of hypnosis if you can subvert what people are thinking and, and give them an agenda that they don't even think of in the first place. Exactly. Right. Uh, so it's <laughs> interesting you bring up hypnosis because hypnosis is done again with what? Words. Words. Yeah. It's just subtle suggestions and if you're, in the end it's all up here, right? Yeah. Uh, it's how you perceive it and how you take it in. So, uh, I see that now this helps you tomorrow, the, the day after's gig. No, no, no. <laughs> so, it, 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 is, it is also interesting to know that Essentially, in your hands, right, uh, depending on how you choose to use this weapon. And I, I say weapon because uh, Jordan Peterson um, yes. said uh, there is no more exceptional form um, uh, of all the capacity uh, to be dangerous than to be articulate. Right. right. So why, why I know this is because, <laughs> say, hypothetically, if you go and to Food City or Kills or something and you, you buy whatever you have to buy, right, check out count time. To that checkout counter, girl or guy. Yes. Right. If you greet them before they are contractually obligated to greet, them, <laughs> contractually obligated. Right. <laughs> and and you smile at them and crack a joke. Yeah. That good feeling will be. Um, how do I say this? It'll influence them. It'll influence them, and in in such a way that they will pay it back to the next customer. Right? Yes. So that and that customer who is probably having a good or terrible day, hypothetically, would then give it back to somebody else. Because that good feeling is something that just keeps expanding. It just keeps bouncing off of people. It, right? it gives that ripple effect. Right? Yes, right. And But you'd also remember that after all those those 50 interactions that might have happened, yes. the only reason why that happens is because you said, good morning, how are you? And, yeah, and just, just something job, very yeah. simple. Yeah. So you have the power <laughs> to essentially alter somebody's reality. Uh, that is very true. I have an example of how, how that exactly didn't go my way once. Okay. And that is part of also how words can be a barrier to communication, especially if you have a language barrier, if you're in another country and you don't understand the language. Right, right, right. right. Okay, so <clears throat> I was in the great nation of Russia. Right, yes. as one always is. As one always is, right. 
And uh, I mean, very clearly, I don't know Russian. Uh, however, within the first couple of days, I figured out how to read. It's not that hard. It's almost almost like the English alphabet. Right. Uh, so I go into this uh, convenience store, like a like a mall, and I buy a couple of things. <clears throat> beers. <laughs> um, I mean, energy drinks. Ener- energy drinks. Right. Certainly. Uh, and so I'm going to the counter. Obviously, I don't know anything in Russian. I just know how to say. Uh, Hello. Oh, yeah. uh, which, by the way, there's two ways of saying hello. There's the informal hello, which is previous, which is very easy, but you only use that for people you already know, like friends. Right. The word for hello to a total stranger is hold up. I gotta prepare. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Why not just say hello? I mm, okay. Yeah. So anyway, so I, I I'm I'm practicing Zrasoiche in the waiting like the queue for the for the right. the checkout counter and the checkout counter is a really grumpy looking lady, uh, middle aged. Right. You can you can see that she has not had the best of days. Right. So I I go in. I'm about to pay. I can't say anything. It's like hello, hi. Sorry, no, no, near Ruski, near Ruski, no Russian. Right. And then I, I go ahead and pay, we do the whole thing, and then she goes, Paket? I'm sorry, what? Paket! What do you call me? No, Paket! 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 And he show, she showed me a shopping bag. Right. So, oh, bag, bag. Yes, yes, I would love a bag. Thank you. And then she rattles off something in Russian, and then I was like, she's clearly not happy. She, with she, me. Yeah, your mother was at home sneezing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My mother was sneezing up the storm. Uh, but yeah, so that. Did not go well with her. Right. Because the language barrier, because I didn't understand what she was saying, obviously she had no idea what I was saying. Right. Uh, so I guess words also help if you know how to. What you are saying. Yeah, if yeah, the but communication then, goes through. No? But then I would say hypothetically, sorry, uh, uh, on the flip side of things, right? If while you're in Russia, you heard somebody saying, then you say, oh my God. <laughs> That's what I'm one of my people. <laughs> People, oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> and you, you run towards that, right? Yeah, so obviously. it has, yeah, yeah, it has the level of um, fraternity and familiarity that you absolutely, generally see. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The feeling of your people. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, again, coming back to this, and I would bring it back to why I need your advice on this. Yeah. Um, I have done a couple of events where I have hosted. Yes. Right. And then it was and even one for the for the podcast where there was right yeah yeah. We, yeah yeah we hosted that thing because that was so bro that was so bro yeah but then I realized that as as the compere for the event as the host yeah. you have so much power yes that you can make an event that is absolutely boring and 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 I realized this because we did Godridge locks oh. Yes, and and by Godridge locks, I mean Godridge like you know Godridge for the hair. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. for the hair cream, like the hair Godric darkener. Hair yes, gel, yeah, whatever. Yes, yes, the hair gel. Yeah. <laughs> they were doing that locks like Yoshi. Padlock. By the way, loves that product. He uses. He it. is the ambassador for it. Oh yeah. Um, they were doing um padlocks, bro. Like you don't understand, like like. That is that is that is padlocks. how boring. Yes, so you don't understand okay. that at nine o'clock. Yeah, nine o'clock, nine thirty in the morning. Okay. When you're having a when you're having an event about Godrich locks, there's only so much fun that can be. All right. Right. And I realized, so I I, I had the chit that I'm supposed to say this 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 this. Oh yeah yeah right? yeah, yeah. And I realized, hey, so if I if I stick to this, it's, it is going to be the most boring right. ass thing. Yep. What if I switch it up? All right. And and just just say instead of saying they yeah. them say hey you guys how's it going you want to know something about locks all right and the second you start like that. At first, they're going to stare at you because you're clearly crazy. And this is Sri Lanka, and to them, anything weird out of the ordinary is like, Exactly. Right, right. Yeah. It is startling, but it yeah. did get their attention. Yes. And it did wake up an otherwise room that it was five minutes into them getting the room, and they're like... <laughs> so it does wake people up. So you do have the power to to demand attention. Yes. And to set a flow as to how the event is going to go also. Just by that first sentence. That first, and I think you touched on a very good point. When you are the MC, uh, you have the power. You have the instrument of power. Was that too loud, Takshi? Okay, good. <laughs> we have a sound for you guys. <laughs> He's in charge of that. Oh, it was. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It was so fun. Um, okay, but, so but, yes, I was saying. 
So you have the power to make or break that event. Right. And number one, it's good. you already have the first thing you need as Looks. an MC. You have confidence. All right. It's your confidence. You're a confident man. Look at you. Yes. I thought you. I thought the first. I thought the first part of that was just looks. <laughs> But yeah. I mean, it is also that. Right, yeah. I mean, then again, I mean, I'm not exactly like a, you know, I'm not Brad Pitt. Right. But still, I get the job done. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it works. Uh, but yeah, being confident in what you're saying, I think, negates like 80% of all your problems in anything, really. Like in any sort of public speaking uh, scenario, if you are confident, and by confidence, I don't mean uh, overconfident. Right. Not that sort of stupidity, not that stupid overconfidence, right. but the confidence that you can do what you're about to do and you may be a little nervous, but it's okay. Right. You use that nervous energy to fuel your positive energy. Right. Uh, and obviously, uh, so the confidence is one thing. As uh -huh. an MC, what... I do is uh, I have like a like you mentioned a, like a chit yeah so yeah I have things like a flow of what I want to say or what I would say what the client wants us to say like would now, you like to show people your binder uh, yeah I mean <laughs> this is what I have for today ladies and gentlemen there you go in multicolors we yeah. have blue <laughs> and gold why because I am a royalist <laughs> okay Are you? you want to play the sound again the chirpy <laughs> Gotcha. Not that one, but thanks. <laughs> uh, I love this song so much, yeah. So yeah, you were saying. I would say. Uh, so you follow this and that's kind of like your uh, crutch, right? Whatever happens, you have this and you can be confident that's something that I use. Okay, I can mess up, but I'll just look down. Oh yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Right. And I know where I am. Uh, and the other thing, of course, is practice. You need to practice. I think you have practice. Uh, I mean, you do. You do. Right. I mean, you do the podcast. Talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk, yeah. The only difference is it's, you know, in front of people. Yeah. <clears throat> and that I have to just say what they want me to say, not yeah. just think of it. Not really. You have to say what they want you to say, but you ha you can bring your own twist to it. Now, I know another couple of, uh, a few MCs who've been on this show also who right. do that brilliantly. Right. I know Mariela, uh, not Mariela, uh, Ashin Sini has Ashin, been on this yeah. show. Fahad Farooq has been on this show. Yeah. Both of them are amazing compiers and they do this also. Right. Uh, I know Fahad also has a friend and I look up to the man uh, and he he has this incredible energy about him and it's not something you put on. Right. It's something it's already a part of you. It so it's, it's your you are. Yeah, it's who you are. Your personality right. that has come through. You don't have to be that energetic, yeah, let's get things going to be a co good compere. Uh, Joel Auchu. Right. He is a great compere. Uh, but his style is not that. He's calm, collected, very cool, very professional. Right. He has a very soothing voice. Calm, cool, deep voice. Right. Uh, and that's his style. So I think if you stay true to yourself, your personality, that will help you also. So confidence, having a fallback like a script, right. and just your personality, I think is also like a good thing. And this goes overall for like public speaking, whatever you're doing. Yeah. Just in, speaking. just in, and, and right. Thank you for the tips, first and foremost. And secondly, I think the fact that you are who you are supposed to be both on that stage and off that stage yes. helps you understand who you really are. And yes. the second you are more aligned with who you really are, the less of an act you get to put out there because it's not false bravado after all. Exactly. And then that makes it easier on yourself. Right. And then you come off as more authentic because people then, like you get the vibe of people, right? You yes. know when somebody's actually bullshitting and somebody's being yeah. genuine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and I think that is also very important when it comes to uh, guys who are trying to talk to the opposite sex or the oh, same sex. Yes. I mean, whatever you're into, bro. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You live, you, you be you, boo. Okay. Um, but it, let's it, just say he walked into that one, folks. It is, it is also very important because there's so many times when I was a child, I am actually old now, so when I was a child, uh, where it was so intimidating to me to actually talk to a girl. And it is just uh, after a while that you realize, holy shit, you can go and say literally anything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is just how confidently you push out that message. Again, something I also didn't know, didn't have at the time. Right. I would sweat buckets. No. I to go talk to a girl. I, I, would so just, I would just freeze up. I would I would dredge. No, no, that's a lie. That's a lie. Um, I, I, do remember, I do remember that. Uh, when, when, do you remember my last few years of Abans? Okay. All right. Abans was sponsoring an event 
Okay. That app it was forced. Day. Wait, hold on. Just to just to be sure, you went you worked with Avans right after school, right? I worked with Avans immediately after school. Right. So right. Okay. There was there was a a brief moment of college, which is not app it, not A N C, but other one. ACBT. ACBT. Oh my god, dude! Right. It's a it's you went there. Uh, How do you know? That, that was ACBT. <laughs> uh, but but um, we were sponsoring uh, some event that Apit was hosting. Okay. Okay. It's an inter-university uh, talent show. Okay. Cool. Right. Um, AK. That was a very pretty girl who mm. came on the market. Yeah. Who? Brown, brown cow. I I I really wish. Da, 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 da. Right. That's uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> So, I remember one point, bro. We were having like I always thought this girl was really pretty. All right, she she was absolutely my type. Right. Um, and I remember once we were having a meeting in this boardroom, and because it because I was in such close proximity, and not to say that I was like right next to also, she was. So now how we're sitting, oh. she was there. All right. It's just that it just really got to my head that this, oh my fucking god, this girl she's is there, here. She's there. She's there. Oh so and I, and I remember I I I broke her to sweat, bro. What? And I said, you, uh, sorry, just excuse. and I'm I'm supposed to be the brand manager there, right? I'm supposed to be the professional. And and just to everybody who knows, I didn't go and do anything to this girl. I didn't call her afterwards and find out what her social media is. I didn't do shit, right? I, I don't was, think back there was social media big. I'm I think you. Facebook wasn't been there. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't approach, and she wasn't a minor. I was probably nineteen <laughs> or twenty. She was probably seventeen or seventeen. Just 18. trying to set the record straight, folks. Yes. All right. Yes, <laughs> but that being said, um, I got I got so hyper aware this girl was here oh, that I couldn't say goodness. what I wanted to say. So as a brand manager, say oh, so I'm giving you this money, but I yeah. want I want my boards to be here. Right. The advertisement needs to be like here. I need the stall here in this thing. Where else can I put the stall and all that shit? Right. I couldn't get it out, so I had a I had a somebody else next to me. Actually, he's fucking laughing also. No, because <laughs> it kind of sounded like you couldn't get it out, I, I, but it sounded yeah, like right, right. there. You couldn't. I, he couldn't get the words. I out couldn't get the words. Is out, what he right. meant. So yes. my my colleague had to host the rest of the meeting. And I said, "Oh, about give me a second, uh, <laughs> You guys just give me a second, and I just I just oh, ran no, out, dude. right? So I do understand what you mean when you say girls scared you so much that you were sweating buckets. buckets. Right, it does happen, but after a while, when you after a while, when you turn thirty, after a while, <laughs> <laughs> after a while, after a while, when after a while, it doesn't it doesn't phase you as much. No, right? yeah. But that again would also come with experience. You have to go and push yourself to the un- the you... uncomfortable area and and push yourself to talk. Exactly. Yes. Right. You can't. You know. You have to go into that. Uh, what is it? Yo. What? You have to go out of your comfort zone. Oh yes. my God. Buzzwords. Right. And and I'll, let me ask you this: since we're on the the topic of speech and how that personally impacted you was there a turning moment in your life where you transformed from guy who sweats buckets when he talks to girls to person who's very confident and cannot talk to the opposite sex <laughs> uh okay i wouldn't say it was like one turning point per se uh i the biggest i think factor of me building my self confidence and exactly like talking to people in general and on stage or whatever is the stage i i was in i was a theater kid right so when i was in grade 9 i i joined uh the school theater company right uh, we did check Sha- inter school shakespeare competitions we did long uh, you know la- what do you call it uh, long full length productions okay long <laughs> long <laughs> i stay yeah <laughs> i am we did full length productions uh, i did i had a few roles so i kind of figured out okay uh if i can't exactly be me talking to girls by the way me being me with girls is kind of weird i never make a good impression right i usually scare them away okay. <laughs> so i would be a milder version of myself just to get some like not to flirt or anything right but like to talk to someone that you know because i was in interact also right uh and in, that and was, in that you had to interact and that i had to interact right 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 yeah uh but I think it was just that experience of being on stage and you know le- not learning how to bat. Like I think I already, or I think I always had it in me. Okay. Uh, but bringing that out kind of helped like throughout this. Okay. And then going to the US for college also helps. <laughs> well, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, you had to. Okay. I had to. Yeah. Right. Well, then if there's somebody listening to this, somebody who's young and has the issues that we had, had. what That's advice would you give somebody? <clears throat> okay. Because like. Not everybody can be a part of a drama. No, obviously, yes. Right. Uh, okay, so the, one of the biggest mistakes, or rather, stupidest 
like con- uh, uh, con- concepts that I had in my head was I was never good enough. And that mm. was created because of another experience when, you know, growing up with this other girl. Who rejected you? Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Who hurt you? Who hurt you? Who hurt you? You tell me your angry story, I'll tell you my angry story. So it wasn't much of a rejection. It was more of a, oh man, this is so embarrassing. Okay, so there's a girl like we um, grew up together, right? Say her name? Uh, no, 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 no. She's in Australia. So oh, okay, okay. <laughs> And like now we're her and her sisters and me and my brother were like sis- we're like family now, so it's fine. See, you're, you're not close now. We're close. I'm a very like like step sister and step brother. Sure. <laughs> so you were saying, yeah. Yeah, that's. Huh, what? That, that would have been that. That's that's step bro. <laughs> that's that's a. I mean, bros would know what we're talking about. Okay, would they? I don't just just tell your story, man. <laughs> you want to press a button again? No, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> the silence. The silence in the room speaks. You know. <laughs> Cricket's going out. Uh, so, uh, I, I eventually want to, I mean, you get to know this person, you kind of get attached, or you grow, you right. have a sense of liking to that person. And uh, so, I, you know, I tried to say, you know, I like you know, all this stuff, but she's like, uh, no, uh, uh, no. So that uh, kind of had a massive, like, oh, impact on me. It's like, oh, it's you. Right. So I'm like, ah, oh, so I'm not, I'm just like, I'm shit. Right. Uh, so that really impacted me and it kept playing in my head every time. Like, it, I still kind of have it, but not as bad. It definitely goes away. <laughs> right. Uh, it's not her fault. It's not anyone's fault, really. It's just, it's just how it is. Right. Uh, it's nobody's fault. Man. So um, because of that, there was this misconception I had about myself. Okay. That, yes, I'm, I wasn't the best looking kid at all. Right. Uh, I was basically Urkel crossed with like a very young Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker? What? Oh my God, what? is that what you think it is? Chris Versus, Tucker's actually a really good looking guy, yeah. Yeah, he is now, but think of him as young, like Ketu. Kota, yeah, that's like Russia one. Yeah, yeah. and what? then Urkel, Steve Urkel. Right, okay. <laughs> Did I do that? Okay, okay, like, fair enough. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, people who are watching this, oh, well, I mean, if you are from our generation, then you yeah. would not. But... Otherwise, it's yeah. a very nerdy kid who had like massive pants, massive glasses. Uh, it was an 80s TV show. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so what was that? Uh, oh, and massive fro also. Like, pff, right, poof. right. So uh, that sort of self-image I have was bad. Uh, and that is the wrong image of, to have of yourself. So if you're watching this, if you are like me and like you're thinking to yourself, oh, I'm ugly, I'm bad at this, I'm bad at this. You're not. Because you have... In our teenage years, we kind of tend to overthink certain things, especially the negatives about ourselves. Right. So one of the first things is to kind of realize, no, I'm thinking about myself wrong. Focus on your positives. Like my positives those days was just the fact that I can go up there and speak to people. Uh, It's just I was, you know, I was demotivated by certain other factors. Right. Uh, You are good with your language. Uh, If you don't know the language, I was thinking English or Tamil, whatever it is, learn the language which is very easy now you have the internet you have books you have resources all over duolingo duolingo right duolingo it's an amazing app you have apps that help you right uh and you have to get out of that negative self-image and have confidence in yourself right that is the big thing uh i think anyone who's watching if if that if you can do that i think you're like almost there almost there yeah it's that self-image has to change right doesn't mean you go thinking I'm the hardest dude or person girl here. Right. No, humility has to be part of that process. Right. Humility and confidence. It's it's interesting that we we started from speeches and, and I know and, whatever, yeah, public whatever. speaking and got here, but then you know also understand that the reason why you felt that way again was words. Was words? It was just it wasn't even a word. It was like a sound. Yeah. It was a sound. Yeah, and and again, so that that shaped. A majority of adulthood. Yes. Yeah, and and I can say the same, man. Because oh when when like, okay, I just so, made self. So I we're, just... <laughs> we're gonna close up of this. <laughs> but I, I I was also very hyper aware, um, especially during COVID. Right. Right. That I had this and and doing what I do, I have this need for attention. Right. Which is why I do the jobs I do. That's also why I'm an actor. Hey. So, I had this. I I realized that I I need. The, the validation of others 
and I needed them to let me know how good I looked because yeah. when I was a young kid the girl I first like fell head over heels and I had a crush on this girl for like a good four years Damn, bro. and I didn't I still didn't Damn, have bro. the cojones to tell this girl that I liked her a friend yeah. of mine oh, went no. and told me it went to her on my behalf all right okay and she liked um, she liked sportsman and okay. I was not even a spur. <laughs> Right? Oh, she liked the jocks. She likes the jocks. Oh, she's right. a she's a cheerleader. She was a cheerleader sort of girl. Oh, right? gotcha. And I was the, oh, the gotcha. class loser. Oh, Technically, okay. yeah. So I, I always liked this girl. There was something about it. like her energy was really nice. Um so I got uh, I got this haircut for the first time way back then. That only haircut. because yeah, I, I, a crew cut. All right, cool. Yeah. Way back then. Only because I realized that she liked rugged players and this was an essential rugged look. No, one. yeah, I remember the crew cuts of that. One, I went, my God. Two, um, I wanted to use my middle name. I'm not gonna call her names. I wanted to use my middle name more than my first name because it sounded more like her name. Oh dear God! So my my I'm I'm on the Sinal Amra Sekra. Oh, got it. Uh, yep. Sinal, so, yeah, Sinal. Yeah, 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 okay, right. yeah. Okay. Um, and after after my friend went and spoke to this girl, right? So now, dude, this is this is interval. All right, this is during interval, and now, and and my friend said, "Shall I go talk to this girl?" I was like, "I mean, yeah, if you want to go talk to me, yeah, talk to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to go. Yeah, I don't go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, are you Wait, sure? I, I have a sound clip from Yoshi. He can be a part of this. That's no, no, no. Yoshan just laughs at me. First, I'll tell this stupid story, and then after that, you can hear Yoshan's laughter. Um, because Yoshan did me dirty for this whole thing as well. Oh, no. uh, so oh, he was a part of this. He was no, he was he wasn't this friend, but he he. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So this girl, much the sweet girl she is, during interval, bro. Now, so now there are kids running. This is Sunday school, right? So there are kids running up and down. Sunday school. Sunday school, bro. I was what? I was looking for Gobi Budu back then. Though. So <laughs> all, all the time. The pass, bro. So so there are kids running up and down, all that shit. And now, wait, I wait, were you wearing the white thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah, the national, bro. And I was a prefect also. I was, I was like. <laughs> I had two badges here also, and now my friends like, shall I go talk to this girl? So I was like, okay. Put that in now, Masha. Put that in now. And then I can see my, I can see my friend Masha. She she goes through this like this sea of people, and and the other girls also there. Like the girl I like is also here. She goes here, and then like like in the movie Masha, like people just like, and then just and then just disappears. Like, Okay, so like, so that like, don't look directly this way, look this way. Ah, don't run, Buddha, because I was a prefect, right? right. Don't run, Buddha. <laughs> so I was pacing like a father who's expecting something also. And then Masha, so now the interval is done. How did that? And I can't see my friend. Like, 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 so the same way everybody came because everybody just went, Phew! and then there's nothing there. And I was like, what happened? <laughs> okay, yeah, go back to class. Go back to class. <laughs> All right, so now I'm staying outside. And then um, I'm out in bro. So now everything has happened, All right? I can't find I can't find my friend and I can't find the girl. Oh no. Alright. And I'm arguing so I know what class my friend is in. Okay. So I was like, this is bullshit. So I went back to my friend's class and she's she's like. <laughs> oh no. I was like, excuse me, miss. I need to talk to that girl. She's like. <laughs> and and because I, I was I was head boy. Right. So when I say I need to talk to this girl, it's serious. It's okay. Right. It can't be because did you talk to my crush? It's, it can't be that. It has right? to be something official. It, ha- yeah. it has to be something official, right? Yeah. I said, uh, Nangan, you talk to you? And I took a slight doubt and she said, what happened? And she's like, you don't want to hear it. Oh. I was like, no, tell me, I can take it. And she's like, are you sure? Oh, I was no. like, oh yeah, yeah. She said, <sighs> she said, so I told her, um, <laughs> I think, I think Amanda likes you. All right. And she had said, and this is, this is, this is hearsay. Mm-hmm. Um, she had said, um, ew, I don't know anything about him and I don't like, really like him like that or something. Oh. And she had, she had, be- because oh. either she felt so off or something, but she had left Dhamma school. She had called her driver because she was like right. big, big, big. She had called her driver and she just like and just left Dhamma left. school. Like right then. Like then and there, which is why she wasn't there. So she never came back to the school? She never came back to Dhamma school. What the boss? My thing. No, she came back like the next day. Oh, okay. it was. But she didn't come back like that night, right? Okay. Oh, well, that day itself. Yeah. And a part of me was so people pleasing pro. That the second I got back, and I was like, oh, this now I'm technically shook. Right. All right. Now the girl that I had a crush. I don't on think that's technically. I think you're like. I was actually shook. Like yeah. Shook, yes. Right. But the the girl I like, Mushroom. Um. So she said this to me, and the second I got back home, I was feeling bad because I felt her, I made her feel uncomfortable. 
Right. So I called another friend of mine and said, okay, uh, that's Keisha. Yeah, I love Keisha. Um, okay, so now this happened. What should I do? And and she was like, that's a really weird thing for her to do. But just say, look, it's a normal thing for yeah. guys to like girls, right? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm yeah. sorry if I made you feel uncomfortable. Uh, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll tell her that. Oh, so I, I texted, yeah. You know what? That lie would have saved me too. Damn. Um, I, I texted her that, right? But what, and she was like, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it, whatever. Um, what I failed to understand, Mashan, was that happened way back 2000s ish right all right it was in me until 2018 2019 2020 oh. that no matter who i went out with and no matter where i was in a social circle yes. i was always you he's fat right so no matter who complimented oh, me no yes. matter how good i looked you i was i was always not good enough and that related to my partners when i was going out as well right. because i was i would always pedestal them because they were too good for me, me. because i was always you he's fat yeah and that you your fat would play over and over and over again so when they would say you so know, it's like they are doing you a favor by going yes, out with you yes like in every relationship you get that that reacher settler sort yes, of situation so I was always the reacher how about your mother I guess yes <laughs> right but I said right hey um, it was it was always reacher settler right so I right, would never right. you were always the reacher I was always the reacher I right? was too <laughs> so it was I was never good enough for them and right, in, right. in that in, our, in your uh, head now this is in your in, head in my head not in real life absolutely right? yeah yeah but in every one of my relationships back then, that would play out. So even if I was doing a good job or whatever it was, I just felt like I was unworthy of this. And that yeah, translated yeah, yeah, yeah. into love language. So I would always pedestal them and, and treat them like precious objects. And some girls, like, they found that weird. Yeah, because they'd never been treated like that before. Yes, which is, I mean, you're toxic enough to understand that. I get it. Like, bro, same, same. Hey, hey. But then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then at the same time, that is how that translates. But again, that is that is the power of words, right? It can't... It's, it's not even a word. It's, again, a sound. A word that is not even a word. Right, right. A it's, sound it's, like you. You. Uh. Yeah, yeah. So so I had to I had to unlearn that. I had to mm. first... I had to first retrospectively understand why I feel this need to always get validation, especially physically, right? Because it's your fat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it can't and be. That, that's like a massive, like, like insult also, though, is like when you say that. Yeah. Now you have all this no fat shaming and all this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Back, back then, back then you, you, you pro shame. Pro shame. Um, <laughs> um, so that was that, right? Um, so that is again the power of words. Why I say Yosham was a piece of shit, and uh, I'll, I'm looking at you, Yosham, and I say this, right? That was that was one time. Where Takshi also listen, Haridhar, bro. That was one time where it was me, Yosham, and this girl, Haridhar. Okay. And now Dhamma school is finishing, bro. I am head boy. You don't understand this. Yosham was my my deputy head boy. Piece how are you shit. guys always? What, what's happening? How That's how we became friends. Oh, okay, right. Right. So Yosham is deputy head boy, and this girl, and like there's some some of the people that. So now Dhamma school is about to finish. Uh -huh. All right. And then he did that, like, they're just, I'm, I'm talking to him. Yoshan kind of knew that something happening. Uh -huh. And Yoshan did that. I caught a fish joke. Do you know the I caught a fish joke? Oh, I may have. All right. I don't so know. it is, I went, shop, uh, I went shopping. I went fishing during the weekend. During and, I, and I caught a fish, uh -huh. right? And then this jackass who is me would ask, how big is the fish? All right. But I knew this was coming. Okay. I knew he was going to do it. So I said, no, no, I know. I know. I know you caught a fish. He's like, oh, okay. Then he looked at her and said, Ali, um, do, 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 do you know? Do you know what? Do you know what the flick is? The flick. Okay. All right. She's like, no. I was like, oh, it's this. And basically, what you do is you do this. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Right. That. And and he hit me where no man should hit another man. <laughs> All right, bro. Yoshan, you know this. I was down. He nutted you. Bro, he, he nutted me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. That's that's what it is. He indirectly done me and he, he hit such a sweet spot, bro. Oh. That that I went down, right? I, I toppled and became like a shell. God and God. then and then the Dhamma school bell rang. So now kids are going home. Right? So now the parents <laughs> he, are coming he, in. He literally rang your bell. But I'm sorry. There's nothing. There's there's nothing for that shit, alright? There's no there's nothing for that. There's only pain. There, there's, the there, there's, on, there's only pain in that, right? And now, this girl is like you. She's also laughing. Thanks, Sorry. bro. Your is on Sorry. this side. He's also laughing. And then they left me. All right? Just so now, double doors? Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm on the floor right now because I can't breathe, bro. <laughs> Yoshan did this and then he left because he has a life. 
this girl went home because she has something better to do. Oh, no. And now parents are coming out to me and saying, Kuta, are you okay? I was like, yeah, yeah, it's not fine. <laughs> and I had to stay there for 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 a good tip. And I know it's it's 10 minutes, but it is the longest. It, it was minutes. a nut and run. Brother, it was the longest <laughs> 10 minutes of my life, right? Oh, and no. and again, I'm head boy. Head boy. I can't be on the first. Teachers are coming. I'm like, are you okay? I have stomach problems. Yeah, yeah it's whatever you want to say, bro. Stomach. And then I and then I did that that it's it's almost like a walk of shame where you just you pick yourself up and you just, just go. <laughs> Thanks, Rashad. <laughs> I hope you're on your turbulence. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> the storm. I hope you're on the storm. <coughs> um, but yeah, power of words, bro. Oh, I died. Power of words. Flick. No, flick. So, so. Social influence. No, no. I've, I've, so while you were talking about this, now, before that, you asked what that turning point was, no? Right. So I have an interesting story. Tip me. And this is, this is <laughs> stuff of legends. So, uh, in 2009, I got the chance to visit the Great Emerald Island of Ireland. The, the who? The Great Emerald Isle, uh, Emerald Island of Ireland. Of it's Ireland. The Emerald okay. Island. Right, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, I was in Ireland, and I, like, with a friend <clears throat> at the time. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying anything, bro. Why are you turning red? I don't know why I'm turning red. You can't see red. I'm brown. You're turning maroon, bro. <laughs> turning maroon. So we were visiting Ireland and uh, part of this island, sorry, Irish tour was in, I can't remember, I think it's in Dublin. There's this castle called the Blarney Castle. Okay. Not Barney, Blarney. Right. Right. It's actually a place. It's an actual castle. And uh, the reason people go there, I can't remember, there's a whole legend and like story that goes with it. But the the main focus is a gala. Huh. Oh, the, right, right, right. An right. actual the, stone. The Blarney Stone. Yeah, the Blarney Stone. Right. So the Blarney Stone is located on one of the top of the highest ramparts. And there's like a, like you have to, it's told that if you kiss this Blarney Stone, right. you will turn into an eloquent man. Right. Like you will be good with your words. Right. So, and the way you got to do it is also kind of interesting, right? I'm going to take my headphones off, otherwise I'm going to knock shit over. Right. But you understand that the, the camera only had that much space over here, okay? So within the space of this, you do what you're going to do. That space. Right. Okay, okay, no, it's just here. It's just okay, here. Okay. It's this way, right? Okay. So, you, <laughs> so uh, if this is the stone right here, let's say the mic is where the stone The mic is. is the stone, okay. The mic is the stone, right? And the rampart is here. Right. So, the stone is kind of underneath the main sort of level of that rampart. Uh, and they've cut out the little block and, you know, there are people holding you and there are, you know, straps and all that shit for safety. Oh, right, right, right. right it's okay. right on the edge, like the top right. edge of the rampart, right? Uh, I think, am I using the word right? Rampart is the top bit, right? Where you walk along. Like the, well, the, ramp, of the yes. castle, mother. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you have to go there and then you have to kneel and then turn over, right? Uh, and you have to go down like this. Bloody, I can't do this. Okay. Uh, this. And you have to kiss the stone upside down. Like, that. oh my God. I'm not bendy as I thought I was. By the way. But yeah. So you have to, Kiss the stone like this. Okay. To kiss the girl this way. <laughs> oh my god. I, I, I was really hoping you'd fall there, but yeah. That was a lot difficult than I thought it was. I don't know how I did that in 2009, but anyway. Okay. So, uh, I believe it is the act of kissing this blarney stone that has made me the eloquent man that I am today. Which is no bearing on it. <laughs> but, uh, that's myth. That's myth. Right. <coughs> but, uh, yeah. So, again, okay. you can kiss the Blarney Stone if you want. Ireland's a great country to visit. It's really green. It kind of reminds me of, you know, home as well. Sri Lanka as well. It's, it's very beautiful. Right. Uh, but, again, words. It's, again, it's, it's the, the myth of spreading that, hey, if you kiss the Blarney Stone, you can talk nice. Right. And, and it, is, it, is, it is because it is in such high demand to be able to speak Right, and that, they have massive queues at that place too. Just you had to, to pay go. a fine to not not a fine, but do you get like a ticket to go and kiss them? So yeah, just to kiss like Shit. a <laughs> We can start that business ourselves. <laughs> we can actually be. We can actually carve a stone that looks like Yosha and you kiss yeah, his ass. Kiss. <laughs> you kiss this, you will grow hair. You'll be the funniest comedian, Sheila. You kiss your child's ass. <laughs> Done, brother. We love you, Yashan. We dearly miss you. We miss you, man. <laughs> Sometimes. When, you're, when I'm not in front of my crush, <laughs> I okay. miss you. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man. 
Yeah. What's again interesting is now how I mean, words have changed. Language is always evolving, right? Right. So things we say always evolve. Like we had the word charisma for being confident and right. you know, having that sort of uh, what do you call it? The charisma and the 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 the, the confidence and the personality. Right. It's charisma, right? Being able to attract people and have them listen to you. One of the things you can do for your gig, right. have that charisma, which you already do. Right. But kids nowadays call it Riz. Riz. And you hate it. Huh? You hate it. I don't like it. <laughs> no, why Riz? Yeah. It's charisma. It's Riz. Yeah, charisma. Yeah. Uh, and there are other words also that's, that's very different now. You can't say, okay, the very obvious one. Uh, I think even Eminem also said this in his new, in this new uh, song, Houdini. Right. Like, uh, so gay used to mean, or I mean, it still means gay is a synonym for happy. Right. Uh, there's a nursery rhyme, but that is the way to be happy and gay. Right, okay. Yeah, but now gay is a word, is a term that we now use commonly for uh, the LGBTQ, members of the LGBTQ community who identify that way. Right. So, words are ever evolving and you have to adapt to the times and use the correct words also. Right. Because as we know now, words can be more sensitive than they ever was and they ever were. Yeah. Excuse my grammar. <laughs> what? Uh, words are more sensitive than it ever was. Ever were. Oh my, I messed up again. Words are more sensitive words, than, I can't than it today. has ever been. Thank you. Yes, gotcha. what he said. Because words are very, very interesting and very, it's very sensitive. Where now. are you going? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say like, it's very sensitive. So you, you got to be careful when right. you address people, right? Right. Uh, for example, you can't go in front of. Did you know, by the way, you can't go in front of an audience where there is one girl, one lady, and say gentleman because it's disrespecting the lady, and quite right. rightly so. And even if there is only one lady, you still say ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah, you can't say lady and gentleman. No, oh, people wow. do that, but no, it's a it's, even if there's one ladies and gentlemen. Right. Uh, so that's that's one of the things I guess a tidbit you can. Right. Carry on. And see, and that, that's the magic of it, right? Because there, there's so much I want to say, but I can't say because you have to be sensitive with what you say. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Because, see, words can hurt now more than it did before. Yeah. But makes then, sense? Yes. But then that is also quite a, quite a travesty because it's not that you want it to hurt. Right. Right. Sometimes it can be just a slip of a tongue, a Freudian slip. Right. Uh, something happened to me very recently because of two words that came out of another person's mouth that was less than ideal in that given situation. But that when that jumped in, that kind of turned into a whole nightmare situation where the whole thing was cancelled, like a massive show was cancelled. Right. Um, and I mean, again, you can't really point blame at anyone uh, because again, it's perception, right? Right. <clears throat> it's how you say it and how you take it. Right. You know full well the the way you can uh, yeah. the words can ruin someone's life. Right. By you may not even intend it. Yeah. It's purely unintentional. But you say something. Right. And it's misconstrued into something else. Right. Just because those things are taken out of context. Right. Those words are taken out of context. And that's where the, the danger comes in. If you don't take if you take words out of context, especially like when it comes to like speeches, big speeches that are being given on stage. And I hate this thing where in the news now, uh, I mean, they do it all the time just to make it shorter. But when a person is being interviewed, they shorten that interview by putting little white flashes and editing the clips right, smaller right, right. and smaller. Yeah. If you think about it, some of the things that person said may be taken out of context. Right. You can turn it the other way around if you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so those kind of things have real big impact. So you really got to watch what you say also. Yeah. And, and that's, that's again, so my question there would be, is it then your fault as the person who's saying the speech? Right. Then you have to hyper, you have to be hyper aware of every single word you say because even end can be taken in an offensive way if somebody really wants to take it in an offensive way. Good point. Um, who was this comedian? I saw this comedian, he was a British comedian, he was a Scottish comedian, if I, if I remember. But you are responsible for the words you say, yes, because you say them. Right. But I personally, this is me, Radhika, Rad, saying, 
I don't think you are responsible for the way people take it in. Right. Right. Singhalen ki matte na ne kya na kaise ki mat asam na sihi buddhi ka hano niyala. Okay. So basically, whatever you hear, whatever you take in, be mindful of what you're hearing. Take it with a you know with some sense of uh, 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 what do you call it? Not knowledge. Grain of salt. Yeah, not just a grain of salt. Uh, sihi buddhi. Uh, my can't words now. As oh, okay, right. I see. I see. So uh, you don't understand. Be smart about it. Right. Yeah. Right. We not just not just take it at face value. Yeah, exactly. Right. Face value, which the legal term is prima facie. <laughs> yes, I right. I know yeah. random shit. No, no, good. <laughs> I'm, I'm so and glad. The, but, and the thing is, if people do get offended, so what? Yeah. You're offended. That's what the this comedian is like. You know what happens when you get offended, right? Nothing. You're just offended. That's all it is. You're offended. Right. Uh, and you can. You're totally allowed to get offended because right. that's a human emotion. and it's that's a sin if you you feel bad about it that's on you that's on you right and and again we're going to double check this and say it a couple of times yes. but this would be <clears throat> our perception our perception this is right. us this is just our thoughts for example both of us in the both of our stories we were we took that word you in a very bad way right again that was us that was on us it was not on them they said it yes i mean <laughs> i mean it is on i mean them. i mean I, i don't know how to take you nicely how how do you take you nicely i don't take it nicely right. but okay. what i'm saying is if we had a bit more maturity and understanding back then right. we would have realized that you is just something that person said and it shouldn't have had that effect on us in the first place right it's the way we took it yeah fair enough fair enough yeah yeah um uh, i mean yeah i mean looking back now it's like eh. yeah but You know, hindsight is you know twenty twenty. You you see everything in hindsight, but uh, it's how you take it. If you're, I would I would I would say this as well, right? So there is there are there are things that you can take to be offensive. <laughs> yes. But what you do with that offense also really matters as well, right? So now what actions you take, no? What actions you take? So if you're if because you said so now when there's a message said put up much and there's three parts of it, right? Yes. There is the message you intend to say. Yes. Right. There is the message itself. Yes, and there is the way I interpret it. Exactly. Right. So now, if you say something, but you mean something else. Yes. Right. So you want to say it's yellow, but you say it's not red. Right. Right. So then I will take that to be it's blue. Right. Right. But then it's not. That's yeah. not what you intended, right? You meant not, or you meant it's yellow. Yes. Right. So then, then it would be on me to really understand that. Okay. So. Because there is there are these two or three other variable factors. Yes, it can't be what you initially thought. You can't jump into co- conclusions. Yes, you can't hypothesize. So then, what I should technically do is double check if that's what you actually mean. Yes, right. exactly. Clarify. Clarify. Back, yeah. And what I do with that? So now, say you actually meant offense by it. Yes. Right. Oh, so yeah, now yeah. we'll we'll say we'll come back to the same equation, right? We're going so far from speech, bro. Um, <laughs> We'll come back to the same. But equation. this is this is all about words. This is words, words and the power of words, yeah. right? Power of words. So, um, if you take it to be, what do you do with that? So now, if you take you, he's fat, right? Yeah. Which is what we got. If you take it in a negative way and you internalize that, you start playing victim card by saying, "Yeah, you know what? I'm fat. I should, you should love me for who I am," and expecting them to do the uh, change, then that's that on that's on you. I think taking it the wrong way. There is a wrong. Yeah, yes. and again, wrong and right is subjective. I get. Yeah, yeah. But this is according. I mean, if if you take that, this is me saying, if you take you, I'm fat. Okay, and I am true to myself. You have to not call me fat anymore, and you can't call me that because I get hurt by that. Right. Uh, yeah, you get hurt by that, but people will be people. That's how people are. People exactly. don't give a shit yeah, about yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 it and it is it is an observable fact. If you are fat, then you are fat. And this is this not just applying to physical appearance, by the way. This right. can be any sort of yeah. If you're mentally fat, difference. Mentally, yeah. Sorry, what? Well, how, how do you mean? How you mean? So this is so. But, but no, sorry. So if you're fat, then you're fat. How is right. that? That that is physical. No, it's not just limited to the physical. Ah, it's not just limited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. yeah it can sure. be any other attribute that yeah, yeah, yeah. people are. Whatever know, people like attack you with, yeah. it is then. So it is on you how you take that, right? Right. So um, th- I think this is a stoic thing where either you you check if it's true. Uh, I I'm not sure. I think you may have. It may be a stoic thing. Stoicism yeah, yeah. So, is also another. Um, how do you explain? I can't. So Stoicism is a a Greek study where uh, a Greek philosophy where basically it's done on a stoa, which is like a, a, a it's it's basically in a marketplace where you sit down. That's what a stoa okay. is, and you discuss ideas. It's where you 
cook things up no. like a stir no, it's, it's absolutely Sorry. not it. <laughs> but it was the philosophy that um, you should be able to be not emotionless but non reactive or in charge of how you react to certain things be oh so like be the master of the emotions master of oh, emotions basically so that's a next level in, studio. in 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 one of the studies there what uh, it could be Marcus or Elias, it could be anybody, man. It could be Plato or somebody. But what they said was... <laughs> one of those Greek people. One of those Greek people. <laughs> uh, what they said was, first, when somebody says something hurtful to you or mean to you, in the intention of bringing you down or breaking you down, yes. first you check if what they're saying is true. If you're fat and you are fat, right? Yes, and okay. and that, that will cause serious health complications to you in the future. Yes. You should do something about it. Yes. Because so it's in your own self-interest. It is in your best self-interest, yeah. right? If what they're saying about you is false, if they say, if they call you fat and you're not really fat, yeah, right, then they're the liars, and the world will see them for being the liars. So you don't have to do anything for that for as well. That. Yeah, you don't have right. to take an action. Yeah, yeah. So it's a win-win situation. <laughs> it's just how you respond to the stimulus that you're presented. Well, what what if you respond like Cartman? It's like you're fat. I'm not fat. I'm big bound. You're in denial. <laughs> <laughs> you're in absolute denial Fair enough. yeah but then that, that, that again is the power of those men. and I think that that actually reflect, uh, that actually uh, reflects back on you as well because I'm a very fond believer of what you say to yourself you will always hear right mm. so if oh it, gosh so yes. as even as the joke right if you say I, you know much I'm always late and you're literally you will, manifest you will manifest oh, that dude, that is the power so of affirmation true. again back to words power of affirmations that's uh, manifesting yeah, that is yeah, all yeah. this it's wordplay right but then you keep hearing the fact and you write your own reality to be I am Amanda I am always late and that it just happens it will start happening so that is why you have to be very careful of <laughs> what you let people say not just about you but what you let in so the, the concept was um, the concept was the ship, right? The ship is something that can so Yoshan, hi Yoshan. Uh, we'll carry ship. we'll carry all he's the a seaman. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I, I, I got you with good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh. So so the, the concept of the ship is the ship will carry the heaviest of items. Yes. From one port all the way to the other. And it will not sink because no matter how much you load on top of it, and and yeah, and no matter how how much the water will crash into it, yeah, wait. it it will still it will still resurface. It is just when there is a crack and the water gets into it, the ship, that's when it sinks. Oh wait, wait! I just had a mind gasm. Like, oh. there has to be an EU button here, right? Mind gasm. Oh, that makes so much sense. Okay, okay. Is that EU? <laughs> oh, I'm hey, calling up. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> oh, using the right power. Uh. Um, Great power, great responsibility, brother. You want? Um, Did you but, just say bro responsibility? <laughs> bro responsibility, yeah, sure. <laughs> but then it is that, right? It is it is what you do with what you are presented with, and if right. you want to, if you want to be the best version of yourself, you have to not be your harshest critic, but you have to also be able to take criticism. So, keep yourself in check and be real about it. Be real about it. Yeah. Right, right, right. Right. So somebody become, again. It is that those three things, right? You might say something but mean something else. Yes. It is a message in itself and how I interpret it. Yes. Right. So if if I interpret something to be an attack on me personally, mm. that person hates me. That's why they're saying these things. That person's merely making an observation. Right. And that person cares about me. That's why they're saying it. Yeah. But you misconstrued it into something. You that can misconstrue it any colorful that, way yeah, you yeah. want. Right. Which is why now people are so prone to take offense in any way they want to because it helps them, from what I at least know, it helps you come to terms with some sort of reality that you might not want to deal with. Right. If, if you are, if, if, if one of my friends are broke and you're just messing around playing video games all day long, and I play video games too. If you're just I mocking, around, yeah, if we play the same video game. Yeah. If, if you're just mocking around playing video games and I come to saying, get your shit together, bro. You're just playing fucking, fucking video games. Yeah, you don't do anything. Yeah. Right. So in his said, I hate him. In his yes. said, I'm putting him below me. Yes. Or in his said, I care, which is why I'm saying this. Oh, I, I understand this because uh, uh, I, I, I love her to death. My wife hates it though when I am playing games. Uh, and I, I, I know why also. I understand right. because it's just me on the front of the computer or my phone just playing either Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, that's the mother- <laughs> fuck. 
that he cannot stay the Kim Pokeball, you ass. Yeah, right. yeah. Or, you know, no one is up playing Spyro, replaying Spyro from the old days, like the old days. Yeah. Uh, but it, if if she makes an observation, hey, you're just playing games all day and you're not helping me, and I, I get mad at her. That's right. my initial reaction. But then I realize, shit, no, I shouldn't take it that way. Right. She's telling me because there is a need of my assistance for her to get something done. Right. And, you know, it's, it's not her just being selfish and not letting me have my time. Yeah. I can have my game time when there's, you know, nothing else to be done. Right. So, again, where you take it. Yeah. And, and I, will, I, will, I will extend an olive branch and say, uh, there, is, there is an extent of bullying that can be done too. So, if somebody's fat and you call that person fat, you mean yeah. it well. And, and this happens a lot in our culture, in brown culture, where everybody in your family will come and say, Mahatalane. And they, they, I think... No, no. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I experienced this. Uh, so when, when I uh, go to our grandma's, you know, any other like relative's place, uh, when I used to be, I mean, I was a lot, not a lot, but a bit put on uh, okay. a couple of years ago, just be, like before COVID hit. Um, I was about five, six kilos a little bit more than this. Okay. And I looked a little. Right. But then I, I now I work out like right. I, after I worked out and I you know came to the size that I liked about myself. Right. Still not there yet, beach dabs. Uh, but I would go to like these relative places and be like, Puta me get to a lane, what can I prostab them? Right. No, there's no problem. What was wrong? I'm actually taking care of myself. Yeah, I'm actually right. taking care of myself. So there's a ne- like weird, like yeah. reverse sort of psychological effect. Also, I don't know what that is. Yeah, but it's, then it's uh, us, right? But it's again, a, it's, it's, it's a cultural is, thing. It is, it is us for sure. And again, it is intention. I don't think the intent. Behind no, no, that, they don't. Right, they don't. right. But then again, I will go on a limb and say, um, if if you if you have a friend who is overweight and yes. your entire friend group and the entire school starts calling that person fat, overweight, ugly, you, there is going to be some sort of detrimental. Absolutely, situation that yes. absolutely because that's the other end of that spectrum no that that is that is considered bullying that should be dealt with sorry no worries. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is considered bullying that should be dealt with in a absolutely. separate way. right but if your closest friend comes up and says Mashan, you need to get your act together you need to get your shit together um i think that will come again you just really need to double check the or, or feel for the intent and yes. then if you don't get it either you clarify Mashan, uh, the, when you said this this is how i feel is that what you mean Me. yeah yeah and if that person says, yeah, you know what, you're actually blah, blah, blah. Oh, he's a piece of shit friend. <laughs> the friend. <laughs> you're an asshole. Go yeah. away. I don't want All you right. anymore. But again, uh, it's it's on you as to how exactly and what exactly you do with that. Yeah. yeah. And this, you know, interesting that you came on this bullying thing because that's now the new thing nowadays is not just the face-to-face bullying. No. no. It's a cyber bullying also. And I think you guys uh, talked that's, about this yeah. on the yeah, early yeah, episode yeah. also. So let's not go there because we don't want to rehash this. But yeah. again, words can hurt. Words can hurt. But another thing words can do is motivate. We've yeah. all seen those movies where, you know, the, the team comes together at the end and the coach or the team leader gives this very pump up speech and they all go and they win. And right. So words have that power of motivating people into doing good things also. Right. And that can be like a positive impact. And, you know, that's why we have motivational speakers. Yeah, for they, sure. Uh, they perfect the art of using words and energy and their energy and their personalities into persuading people to feel good about themselves and uh, achieve a certain goal, right? Right. Uh, so, again, it's a tool that can be used both ways. Right, for sure. And I would also jump on this because you are now an aspiring comedian? No, you are a comedian. You did your first Aspiring. Game. I did one, dude. That, okay. that was so because you should push me into Since Rads is a comedian. Oh, no. I would also like to touch on the fact that comedians and uh, rappers, and not like your candy rappers, but you know. <laughs> candy rappers. Chicken, yeah, rappers. Then, I, there's, there's no scratch man here, but yeah, whatever. Uh, rappers would be able to use words to bring attention to things that are otherwise considered taboo and you're not supposed to talk about gosh yes and that way you stir the emotions of the masses absolutely and, and that is done so poetically and, and so eloquently when, i mean some rappers, i guess they all kiss the bloody stone <laughs> every rapper every rapper every, every one of those every rappers, comedian every one of those rappers they took a flight <laughs> to ireland to, to the bloody castle right they and one out one after the other they stood in line <laughs> sick my guy, <laughs> we gotta kiss that stone. <laughs> kiss the damn stone. 
Um, but I would say that's also very interesting. The, the way you can use words to either hype up, bring down, uh, motivate, demotivate, and, and otherwise evoke emotion in somebody that might not even feel that same way. Because like we, like we spoke about earlier, right? Yeah. Um, with regards to Hitler, no matter how much you put him down, you have to give him credit where it's due, where he was able to rile up the emotion of that entire nation. And he's about he, he, yeah. he could yeah he could speak truth into you. It was a terrible truth. Yeah, it was not but, the, yeah, 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 the truth at all. It was yeah. just his truth. It was his truth. But if he can make you realize his truth, that is the power of words. Exactly. Yeah. The same thing that Saruman did. Gandalf the White. Gandalf the Fool. Lord of the Rings. And and, and I'll it's tell true. you what. I mean, it's... Absolutely, right? So it is also beneficial for people not only to talk to the opposite sex and for public speaking. It actually bodes really well if you know how to put your word, uh, your, your thought to word. Because yes. if you can convey a message so efficiently that somebody doesn't have to do follow up with you, you become, you become so invincible in, in a communicative space that people recognize you the second you walk into a room just because you make them feel a certain way just by saying something. That is, yeah, that's a good thought. That's like a very good point. Yeah. Um, and I would say one of so now that I now that I do this for like a twenty four seven thing uh, mm-hmm. for a living, um, I have this uh, this compliment back theory, where if somebody gives me a compliment about something, yeah. I would re compliment them back on something else on, on something that they're wearing. So you say you come say hey, much a nice suit. I would say well you know what, I I know you would be the person to realize that because you're always so well dressed. Uh, so oh, it, is, it takes one to see one. Like it is that. It is that. It is. Okay. It is reshining the spotlight. Okay. Request right back at you. What do you do if there is nothing to compliment about that person? You figure something out. Uh, and, and but it's, it doesn't have to be a lie, right? You're it, not going to lie. Should, it, should it. it should be a lie. Yeah, it should be yeah, a lie. It, sh- it should be that. Oh my God, you're the most beautiful person I know. It's, it's absolute gosh. Like it's absolute garbage. <laughs> and the thing is, if if you do lie about it, then they would also know. Yeah, you, you right. can't catch the lie. Yeah. So you had to be, and and that. To me, when when I had to transition from being an absolute introvert, like a neat sort of introvert, oh. to being able to talk to people, was when they would say something to me. So my thing was, I anyway had that barrier of, I don't believe what you say because I have internal damage. <laughs> it comes on and goes up there. So stop, whatever, stop. whatever nice Put thing that do, down. Whatever, see? Whatever, <laughs> Let me get... Yeah, yeah. So, so the thing is, the thing is, whatever nice things they will say, we just go and just go through it. <laughs> oh, it's wow, like, you look so great. Like oh, oh, thanks, man. Thanks so much. You know what? <laughs> those are really cool shoes. Where do you get them from? And, and that way, again, you you make them feel good. You about did you. that to me, you bastard. And oh. now you're here. <laughs> no, no, you don't get that. <laughs> no, you don't. All right. So, oh, we do have a scratch pad. Is that a <laughs> shit? Yeah. All right, cool. But that's like a. Yeah, yeah but that's as close as yeah. um, So, coming back to it, man. I think the, the way that you have the power in you to actually evoke an emotion out of someone and that you can, if you master it, if you become a, if you, if you, if you gain the power of a silver tongue, yes. you can garner the attention and force the attention of somebody by All just saying. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody. Some yeah. one or some two or some three or some four. Um, just, just by using your words, and I think. So you word that in a way that is. Yes, yes, yes. Out. I will play my own thing, not that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that's pretty magical, man. That's very true, and that is why when you have something to talk into like this, yes. and you're addressing people, you really do have the power to like really influence those people. Absolutely. And with that power comes great responsibility. I can't do the voice, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Whose voice are you doing? Spider Man's. I'm trying. No, oh, I'm Uncle trying Ben's. Do, I'm trying to do the the movie uh, soundtrack voice. Coming to you this summer. I can't, I can't. My voice doesn't go that deep. He has a cold, you guys today. All right. Next time he will do that. This time we're gonna say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Next time we'll see. All right, all right. And and to come to a close on this episode of words, right? Um, I will ask you, sir. Oh. What are and we did the homework at home, don't worry. Yeah. What are, homework at home, no what, else. What, Not like in a coffee house. What like last five minutes coming here? Yeah. Right. What are five quotes that you live by day to day that you use in your daily life? Okay. I so when I when and, ask, and 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 you let us know in the comments who had the better five quotes. All right. Is more five quotes or what? my really cool five quotes? You let but me know. No. Among those quotes, are the best quotes. You don't even know what I was. Rad's quotes. Eh.
but Aman scores the best cuts. You can tie that. Just say A, hey, not you. Huh? That's a trigger word for the both of us. Don't say that. Huh? I got over it now. Point. 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 All right, all right. So here we go. I wouldn't say I live by these, but I sort of keep them in mind, okay. right? So. Uh, Okay, okay, here we go, here we go. Ready, we're ready. The big one is actually a military quote. This was kind of drilled into my head okay. while I was in the US uh, in college also. Uh, it was a very special college uh, of the military sort that I can't get into because it's, it's on a need to know basis and uh, well, I'd have to kill you if I told you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, would you like to tell us your quote today, Vasa? <laughs> yeah, today. So, uh, this is by a guy called uh, Major General John M. Schofield. Right. And this sounds complicated, but I'm going to break it down. Okay. Right. This is a lot. This is a short version of a like a five minute long quote that I memorized. Okay. I memorized. So, the discipline which holds the so uh, the discipline which makes the soldiers of a that Aman, wait, no, Aman, no, wait. Aman the one automatically. Hidabak, yeah. Hidabak. The discipline which makes the soldiers of a free country reliable in battle is not to be gained by harsh or tyrannical treatment. On the contrary, it is far, it is far more likely to break than to make an army. Right. Okay, so right. think about that. The discipline which uh, makes the soldiers of a free country reliable in battle is not to be gained by harsh or tyrannical treatment. Right. You can't rally a soldier by treating by being a tyrant and treating them like shit. Right. It can only make break the army instead of making it. Right. Right. The court will go on to say that it springs from the uh, breast of the corresponding the commander in how they you know respect them and treat them and all that stuff. Right. So that basically means that. You have to treat people the way you want to be treated. Right. Treat people with kindness. Right. So now when I said, Mashan, you want to give you a five favorite quotes, I didn't ask you a five favorite essays, bro. I didn't ask for a quote. It's like two That's lines. something I live by, guys. One or two Damn lines. <laughs> so and, those and, two lines. And, and of the two lines, out of the rest of the quote was there. Also. <laughs> All right. Okay. So <laughs> that was one. That's why I'm kind to people. Yes. See? Nice guy. Right. Uh, second one. Second one. Uh, oh, I, I, this is from Moulin Rouge because I'm a bit of a hopeless romantic. Uh, the greatest thing you'll ever learn is to love and be loved in return. I'm on the two. Dude! <laughs> that's a good quote. That's a good one. Hari, hari. Okay, the next one is Shakespeare because it makes a lot of sense to me and okay. it's the famous one. All the world is a stage uh, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and entrances and one man in his li uh, lifetime plays many parts. Right. Okay. That makes like it's Makes so much sense. To me makes because, sense. Okay. You have right? one cool quote. Okay. Push it. <laughs> okay. The next one. <laughs> this is from a movie called Talladega Nights. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> Talladega Nights. What, what do you think it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Will Ferrell movie. Yeah. Will yeah, Ferrell yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, right, uh, right. John C. Riley. Right, Shake right, your right. back, baby. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Love it. yeah. So uh, it's, uh, if you ain't first, you're last. Yeah. I just like it. Nothing yeah, absolutely. Like 100%. It. If you ain't first, you're last. All right. Uh, and the last one, and this I actually do try to live by. It is very difficult and people make it very difficult at times. But it's called the serenity prayer. It's a prayer, but in the words make sense. So the prayer, the well, serenity before, before you start, is this an essay? No, no, no. <laughs> it's not an essay. Shut up. All right. It's Ta a nice Ta one. Takshi, Takshi is the judge. Huh? Takshi will say, what are one or two sentences? That's the quote. It is one sentence. Okay, thank God. Is it is it with the M's and buts? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. I can neither confirm nor deny that. All right. Okay. okay. So the serenity prayer goes on this. And you can take it away. It starts with God grant me, but you know, whatever, bit deity, you, whatever. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Okay. <sighs> That's all right. That's a good one. I got a bonus one. Too. Uh, okay, fine. If you, you give me your bonus, I'll give you my bonus. Honey, my bonus comes from a... Uh, the Goofy movie back in 2000 something something. It's from a song, okay? You wrote something down right now. I wrote my bonus. Bullshit. Something about me, isn't it? No, no, no. no. Okay. So this, this is the song that they sing. Uh, this kid sings trying to impress the girl. Okay. Uh, it's called Stand. So stand out above the ground even if I got a shout out loud. Stand out above the ground even if I got a shout out that's the I quote. Can't sing, but it's just, yeah, it's just that's the quote. The quote is stand out loud above the ground, even if I stand out loud. Yeah, even if I got a shout out loud. Stand out. 
Stand out above the crowd. This I mean, that's be, what I do as a, like a... the easiest competition I ever took part in. Hurry. Bullshit. I will tell you my five really cool plus my bonus quotas. All right? Fine, but it's not that cool, okay? It's the coolest. All right. First quote. I'm the one with the cold, okay? It's not cool. First quote, <laughs> all right, is... Um, uh, you probably know who this is as well. Okay. Um, History will be kind to me for I intend to write it. <gasps> I lose it. I lose it. I lose it. I don't know this. Uh... Palli on top of mountain. Eh? Palli on top of mountain? Palli yeah. on top of a mountain. Is this second ah, one? Ah, Churchill. Ah, okay. <laughs> Churchill. Good Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, my second fairy quote is, uh, do not speak bad of yourself for the warrior within you hears those words and is lessened by them. That's an old samurai proverb. Oh, lovely. Right. You know what the interesting part about that is? Warrior is literally my name. Ranavira. Oh, yeah. Right. Couldn't come up with your belly coat. I know. <laughs> I, hey, I didn't know that samurai <laughs> said that. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, my, my third favorite quote is, um, and this is more towards contemporary times. You don't become confident by shouting affirmations in the mirror, but by having a stack of proof that you are who you say you are. That's by Alex Homozik. I don't know who to wear it. Alex Homozi. Big beard guy. Always wears like a tank top and a t-shirt and a cap. <laughs> okay. No, no, like, like, like really big in the marketing world now. I, oh, okay. Uh, okay. Sure, I, I, sure, I, sure. Do yeah, you yeah. know exactly who it is? This is why I'm not good at marketing. <laughs> so Alex Homozi. Yes. Um, <clears throat> it's not over until I win. Oh, I love it. Was Les Brown, the motivational speaker. Oh, yeah, I love it. It's um, this is, if I don't do it, who will? Good one. That's by Goku from Dragon Ball Z. Oh, no. the, the original anime, right? Like original anime, Super Saiyan 3, Goku. Oh, if I don't do it, cool. who will? Very cool. And my bonus one is something that I use every day when somebody tries to give me some bullshit and uh-huh. I realize, eh, that, that seems like it's a you problem. <laughs> not, not my monkey, not my circus. <laughs> not my monkey, not my circus. Love you it. tell us in the comments below not just, not just I know I won. Not just the fact no, that no, I won. No, 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 don't give you, me the You say Amanda, you won no, so spectacularly don't. that it's not even a competition. I How? Feel, I no, heard, I, I had good quotes. I heard this bugger. Very cultured person. I heard this bugger. Rush and I'm halfway through and I fell asleep. Amanda, but when you started speaking about your quote, bro, I woke up good quotes. Thanks so much. Takshi, judge? No. Hey! Oh, oh come on! <laughs> Thank you so much, you guys, for I watching. No, that's... <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. This is Bushinik! I will not start for this. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sitting Today's for this. Episode. Oh, wow. Well, that's so, bro. Right? Do you have any last words or essays you'd like to say, bro? Well, now that you ask. That We're done. All right. Damn it! <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Please comment, subscribe, um, uh, follow us on our socials, and we'll see you in the next one. Say bye. Adios! Oh, okay. See you, guys. <laughs>